This presentation is brought to you by the Colorado Neurological Institute Movement Disorder Center. My name is Dr. Rajiv Kumar and I am the Medical Director of the Colorado Neurological Institute Movement Disorders Program. In this presentation we will review various non-pharmacologic or non-drug options to help treat or manage symptoms of Parkinson's disease. We will especially discuss lifestyle issues such as diet and exercise. There is accumulating evidence suggesting that exercise can significantly improve various symptoms of Parkinson's disease. Working with allied health personnel such as occupational therapists, physical therapists, and speech therapists can also help improve day-to-day -day function. There have been a variety of claims suggesting that nutritional supplements can help slow the progression of Parkinson's disease or help improve symptoms. Unfortunately, to this date, none of these claims have been substantiated. Exercise has shown to be helpful for maintenance of general health for normal individuals in the population. For the general population, as well as those with Parkinson's disease, exercise improves cognitive function, mood, sleep, fatigue, and reduces constipation. It has also been shown to improve a variety of different features of Parkinson's disease specifically, including gait, strength, balance, and speed of movement. There have recently been several clinical trials studying the effect of exercise on symptoms of Parkinson's disease. Cardiovascular training focusing on treadmill exercise produces significant and sustained benefit in bradykinesia and gait. A recent study of forced exercise has been shown to improve features of Parkinson's disease, perhaps even more than exercise done at a comfortable rate chosen by the patient. In this study, patients with Parkinson's disease rode a tandem bike behind a professional cyclist, forcing a constant rapid speed. Increased cortical activation was shown in functional MRI studies of these patients, suggesting that exercise may alter motor control. Tai Chi is a popular exercise in many Parkinson's disease support groups. In fact, Tai Chi has been shown to significantly improve balance in Parkinson's disease. In animal models of Parkinson's disease, exercise causes relief of growth factors in the brain, also known as neurotrophic factors. These may prevent the loss of dopamine-producing cells. Patients with Parkinson's disease should maintain a well-balanced diet focusing on consumption of fruits and vegetables. A substantial intake of fiber and water is helpful in reducing constipation, which nearly all patients experience. Protein-rich foods can interfere with the absorption of levodopa if taken around the same time. As a result, we generally recommend that patients should take their levodopa at least one hour away from meals. In patients who have advanced Parkinson's disease with severe motor fluctuations, occasionally a protein redistribution diet is recommended, in which most of the daily protein is consumed with the evening meal only. On the other hand, some patients have nausea or vomiting due to levodopa. Taking levodopa with food then reduces the peak drug concentration in the blood, which can reduce nausea and vomiting induced by levodopa. Physical therapists work with patients with Parkinson's disease in order to improve range of motion, exercise tolerance or endurance, and overall motor function. It is especially helpful to improve axial or midline motor function, such as difficulties with gait, arising from a chair, poor posture, and reduction in balance. In addition to working with a physical therapist, patients must follow an ongoing home exercise program in order to maintain maximal benefit. Occupational therapists work with patients to maintain quality of life by suggesting adaptive devices or other methods to overcome physical limitations. Most of the adaptive devices focus on tools which may help compensate for reduced dexterity such as specialized utensils, for example, when eating. Home safety evaluations can also be helpful in reducing environmental dangers, such as reduction of falls by removing obstacles and walkways in the home, adding railings, and adding assistive bars in the bath. Speech therapy using the Lee Silverman voice technique, or LSVT, has been shown to improve hypophonia or low speech volume in patients with Parkinson's disease. In the past few years, this LSVT program has been combined with physical therapy program called the BIG program in order to combine loud speech with large-scale or explosive gestures and movements. 
This combination can be quite helpful with increased carry through to day to day living. Expiratory muscle strength training, or EMST, involves patients breathing against resistance in order to strengthen swallowing muscles. This reduces trouble with eating and drinking. There are a wide variety of nutritional supplements which are marketed to patients with Parkinson's disease. Unfortunately, the production of nutritional supplements is not regulated by the FDA. Side effects may occur and drug interactions are not uncommon. Many supplements have been studied in a careful and scientific manner to determine if they are effective. Until recently, coenzyme Q, vitamin E, and vitamin C were thought to potentially be helpful, but unfortunately, studies have shown them to be ineffective. Vitamin C and vitamin E are both antioxidants, and it has been thought that oxidative stress promotes dopamine cell death. There are currently ongoing studies of both creatine and inosine to determine whether or not these supplements might slow Parkinson's disease progression. Creatine is a bioenergetic compound which increases energy production in cells. It is thought that by boosting energy production of dopamine cells, they may live longer. High levels of uric acid have been associated with slower progression of Parkinson's disease. It is thought that taking the supplement inosine, which is a precursor of uric acid, may cause uric acid levels to be increased and as a result slow Parkinson's disease. Neither creatine nor inosine have been proven to be helpful, and both may have potential adverse effects. We are hopeful that one of these supplements may be shown to be effective. We recommend that you speak with your doctor before starting any supplements. Lifestyle decisions can impact your symptoms of Parkinson's disease. For example, as we've discussed today, exercise has been shown to improve symptoms of Parkinson's disease, and this is one thing that you can do to be proactive to help you manage your own symptoms. Although various supplements have been studied and not been shown to be helpful in the treatment of Parkinson's disease, there is one supplement, creatine, which shows some promise and is currently under study. It may be appropriate for you to discuss whether or not you should take this supplement with your own treating neurologist. Being educated by reading and watching patient education videos like today's presentation is another weapon to help you manage your own symptoms.